Hi, this is Amanda back with another Fairy Stamper Design Team video. And today I'm going to be sharing a very easy technique that I'm calling Distress Oxide Smearing. I imagine that you could do this with any pigment inks, but this is the pigment ink fusion that I have. So I'm using the new Uncharted Mariner uh, ink. You could use any color though. And I'm using the Dogwood Blossom stamp from Fairy Hugs but you could use any stamp that you wish. Now I'm gonna to have to stamp this twice because I did not get a very good impression the first time. So after I get a good impression, then you're gonna take a clean blending foam or some kind of sponge or something that is clean and smear your stamp. Now, as you notice, I cleaned my stamp off over there on the side first. So this first one, I'm not gonna get a very good um, effect with this. So do as I say, don't do as I do. <laughs> you want to smear this right away. I will come back and fix that one later. I should have just done it right away. I don't know why I didn't. I just, I didn't. <laughs> so now we're going to stamp the stamp again up here in the corner. And then I'm going to stamp it. I'm going to stamp it again because I still didn't get a very good impression. I don't know why I wasn't getting very good impressions. I Sometimes I just don't get very good impressions with solid stamps unless I'm using the VersaFine. And I imagine VersaFine might work with this. I did not try it. Now you can see that I did get a nice smeared impression. And that is what I'm looking for here. I'm going to move my stamp and do it again so you can see how this technique works. I'm going to stamp and smear. <laughs> well, I'm going to stamp each one of these twice and smear because, like I said, I wasn't getting very good impressions with these. Um, so I'm going to stamp it twice and then smear. Going in with my foam again. And smear and I really like the way that this gives a very nice soft um, kind of a tone on tone look and then I'm going to fill in this last little space here after I flipped my card panel over so I had room to stamp we're going to stamp twice I'm going to stamp again here and then we will smear and then I will go back and show you that I can fix that first one that did not smear very well because as you can see I have a big white area <laughs> where that first flower was and it's not looking very uh, not looking very cohesive there so I did line up my stamp off screen because I had my big head in the way and I didn't think you really wanted to watch that <clears throat> so stamp and then smear and now you can see that this all looks cohesive it's a very nice soft look so that is a very easy technique that anyone can do if you have Distress Oxides. If you want to try it with other pigment inks, I think that it would work, um, but don't quote me on it. So now I'm coming in here with the Fairy Dictionary stamp, and I'm using Distress Ink this time, not Oxide, and stamping over the top. And the reason why I chose Distress Ink is because that um, the ink is a kind of a darker color where oxides dry muted so the ink is going to show up um, brighter over the distress oxide and so that is why I chose the ink over the oxide again now I'm going around the edges with the ink and I chose the ink for the same reason um, because it is going to give me um, a brighter uh, darker brighter whatever <laughs> look whereas the oxides will fade into the back Another reason why I chose the ink to go around the edges is because um, if I continued on with the oxide, I felt like it would um, it would just blend into the flowers where the ink again is going to, um, it's gonna be a slightly different color <laughs> versus the, I mean, they, they are the same in the same tone, but they, um, because it is going to be a little bit darker, it's not going to mute into the, you know, kind of, blend into that flower. So I am going around with black soot here just because I wanted it to be just a little darker, especially around the corners. So I'm just going to um, give it a little bit darker edge here. That is the only, co only color that I used on this card that was not um, the Uncharted Mariner. So I am gonna, I dried this off screen with my heat tool. You can let it dry naturally if that's your thing. I'm not patient, so that's not gonna happen. <laughs> So now I'm going to come in here with the Distress Ink again um, to stamp. Now I know a lot of people say that Distress Inks do not stamp well, 
and they don't stamp crisp, but you can get them to stamp, and I, I had good results here. Um, <clears throat> so again, like I said, I'm choosing the Distress Ink here um, for the same reasons I chose it before. If I used the Distress Oxide, it would just blend right into those flowers and you wouldn't see it. Um, I am going to put the um, Uncharted Mariner in the embossing Oh my goodness, embossing glaze over the top. So you might be able to use the Distress Oxide if that's all you had, because the embossing glaze is going to make it darker. <clears throat> it may not be quite as dark as what I have here on that, but it would be darker. So I did stamp that uh, Dragonfly another two more times off screen, just so you didn't have to see me do it repetitively. Now I want to do my sentiment, but again, I want this card to be tone on tone and match the theme that I have here. So I'm just taking a piece of white cardstock here, blending some distress ink on it in that same Uncharted Mariner. And then I'm going to use this to die cut my sentiment. And I just use a memento, memento die set that I have that says happy birthday. And if I put this happy birthday here on top of this card, it would just blend right in. So I'm going to use that embossing glaze again and cover the happy birthday. Um, I do, I thought it would be easier instead of smushing my Versamark ink pad into the die cut sentiment to use this, um, it's an embossing ink with a brush on it. Um, there's a couple different companies that have this. I believe Ranger has one or maybe it's Tim Holtz brand. I don't know. Um, I think WOW has one. There's a couple different companies that have one. This is a this is one from a company that I used to design for. Um, they're all basically the same. It's an embossing sticky ink, clear sticky ink. And so I just uh, covered that on there and then I'm just wiping up the mess here on my desk. And then I'm just going to pour the embossing glaze over the top here on a scrap piece of paper, <clears throat> shake off the excess and then heat it. So we are going to show that on screen. I don't usually show the heating process on screen just to kind of save some time, but I did want to show you how I, um, how I hold on to little die cuts like this, just in case you were wondering. Um, there are several different ways that you could do this. I didn't attach any little pieces of paper or anything to mine like some people do, um, just to kind of like hold it as a handle. I just take my tweezers and put it into a little hole in the word and then heat it with my um, heat gun. It does kind of fly around a little bit, but because the tweezer is holding it from flying off my desk, it still heated up all the embossing um, glaze and it was fine. So I am going to attach these into the lower left hand corner, just with little teeny tiny dabs of glue. So it doesn't smear out or anything like that. And it is perfectly adhered to my card. Off screen, I did mount that on a black mat and put it on a white card base. And then now I'm just attaching some pearls from Cat Scrappiness. And I can't remember the name of them, but I will have them listed in my supply list. <laughs> I'm going to add a finishing touch of a Nouveau Glitter shimmer no nouveau aqua shimmer pen if i can remember it has been a long day guys my mom's having surgery tomorrow so we had some pre-op appointments and stuff like that so it's been a long day and the doctor was running two hours late uh, anyway so i'm just adding some nouveau aqua shimmer pen here in the glitter gloss color and that will finish up my card for today i hope that you enjoyed this easy technique and tone on tone card as always, the supplies are listed in the description box below, along with my social media links and the social media links for Fairy Stamper, as well as the Facebook group where we have challenges and prizes and such. Uh, have lots of fun over there. And as always, have a great day.